Welcome to Peninsula Beat, I'm Maria Soreo. It was a party for our entire community, also known as the Palos Verde Street Fair and Music Festival, and RPV TV was there for all the fun. This fair this year looks bigger and better than ever. Thank you, we are so excited. It is the 27th annual, and as you very well said, we have incredible chamber members, volunteers, community members, sponsors who help put this together. You can't put on a party for 40,000 people without a really good team behind you. You know, I, it seems like you've got a lot of new booths this year, especially shopping and food. Yes, oh my gosh, there is an incredible assortment of vendors and artisans. We have the wounded vets here who have these fabulous necklaces. We have commercial booths. Um, DCH Toyota, of course, is here with their amazing cars. So it's a huge assortment. We just want everybody to come on down and shop till you drop and have a good time. <laughs> Tell us what you love about the Palace Verde Street Fair. I love the Philly cheesesteak and the cheese fries. This is your favorite. Now, you're a workout guy. You're here with Spectrum. Is this on the diet? No, this is my cheat day. Saturdays are cheat days. I work hard, work hard through the week so I can cheat on Saturday. The street fair, it's like all about ha hanging with your friends and tea night. It's just hang out with your friends on the rides and the food is always amazing. I think like you could hear like a lot of good music, like they're singing and like it's also like pretty, you know, relaxed if you came here. So like I really like it. It's another exciting year we have here and it grows and grows every year. We're excited to have all the community up here and really show the pins off to the community at large. We are here with a blue ribbon winner, okay, thank you. Moses, and tell us how many years you've been coming to the dog show. We've been coming to the dog show since I got Mo, so it's okay. five years. Wow, yeah. five years. There we and go. Sure. Talk about how much fun this is for the dogs to be here. It's really, a, it's, it's a good experience because it's a socialization and it's a fun competition. Everybody's not uptight with combing and grooming. Mo's a noob, he's got a haircut, but he still okay. came out. Last year, now, he won longest hair. Wow. But this year, he just wow. came to have fun. And speaking of celebrating, the Terranea Resort is celebrating its five-year anniversary. There will be festivities throughout the year for residents to enjoy. Executive Vice President and Managing Director Terry Hack sat down with Liz Brown Swanson to talk about Terranea's success and the resort's positive impact on the community. Big congratulations for starters. Thank you. We're I, so excited. It is so, so exciting excited. to be here and you have so many accomplishments to be proud of. For you and your team, what's it like to reach a milestone like this five years? It is very exciting and I'm just thrilled to be sitting here with you as we sat here when it was dirt right initially we, were hard and hats, I we did <laughs> we did and it's so exciting to know that this milestone 5 years were we're just um, so pleased. Since you've opened, like, I'm curious, how many guests can you estimate have walked through here? Oh my goodness, there's so many because we count guests overnight guests of course, but then the numerous guests that just come walking for a stroll or just in for a meal. So um, I would say millions, really. Millions. Mm -hmm. When the guests come here, you know, what is the Terranea experience? What do you want to await them when they come? I mean, there's just, you have it all. We want them to really script their own stay. Whatever they want to do, if they just want to relax by the pool, then do so. If they want to be really involved and go kayaking or bike ride or horseback riding, they can do that. It, we really want them to say this is my resort and here's what I want to do today. If they want to go to the spa, if they want to play golf, it's really unscripted. In the beginning, when we, before you even opened, you were faced with financial hardship, you were trying to open a resort, and what was really one of the worst economies ever. Yes. And, um, but you turned it around. How are you, were you able to make this a profitable resort and, and such a success? I think it was a very troubled time for all of America and American economy and our bank did um, have some troubles and stopped lending just shortly before we opened. And so to um, garner as much strength as we could to just set forth and say, we're going to open, we're going to do it gracefully, we're going to garner as much business as we can. So we never moved from that platform. We said, we are going to open and we're going to not only survive, but thrive. And so we've continued to put our best foot forward, continued to grow our business, we have about 38% of our business is repeat guests. So year over year, people continue to, um, they may come for just a night and then next year, two nights, next year, three nights. Um. 
one thing we know is certainly can gauge your success is just looking within the, our own city of Rancho Palos Verdes, the amount of millions of dollars that have come into the coffers um, through the transient occupancy tax. It's just tremendous you know, you. help to the community. Um, what do you want the residents to understand about the fact that you, how much you do contribute, that revenue stream that you generate for RPV? Yes, early on there was some controversy regarding TOT and um, we actually even thought about um, wanting to borrow some, some of our own TOT that we were to um, pay later. We did not do that. Some of our residents still think today that we were borrowing from our city. In fact, we did not do that. Right. And I am so excited to report, and it's public record, so I'm not really saying anything that's um, not for public disclosure, right. but we'll cross over the $14 million mark at the end of this year of our TOT tax that we're giving back to the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Yeah. So I'm so pleased with that, and I think that that's really helped. It goes into the general fund, so it helps infrastructure and roads and improvements within our city, and I'm very proud of that. Just an amazing um, milestone that's five years, but the community has really been a support to us and I'd like to thank them. A big congratulations to Terry Hack and her Terranea team. Check out Terranea.com to find out about five-year anniversary festivities and special offers happening throughout the year. And it was a night of magic and fundraising at Trump National for the local charity Freedom For You. <laughs> Thanks, Maria. We're here at Trump National for the Freedom For You fundraiser, where tonight's theme is magic. Tonight's event's about helping to support kids. We're here to help raise funds for Freedom For You youth programs, which focus on creative arts, life skills, leadership, and service. And the theme is the magic of music. So we have magicians here from the Magic Castle, as well as uh, lots of musicians performing, uh, teens from different schools. Well, I think they're truly a model for the peninsula. Um, as a nonprofit, um, here you have a group that has a, um, assembled in order to provide much needed services, although maybe not everyone realizes that we do have at-risk youth, uh, even though our community has a fabulous educational system and we're surrounded by beauty and frankly affluence, uh, but we do have at-risk youth and it is a very much needed service uh, to be providing counseling and other services to at-risk youth. At Peninsula High School, Freedom For You, they fund the counseling programs for students who get in trouble with things like drugs and alcohol. We have a program, an Outlook program is what we call it, and it's uh, six weeks of uh, counseling for the student, very confidential at our high school, um, and it's right on site, and then uh, they also work with the families, which is so important because most often the parents are just shocked that this has happened to their child, and it really helps to have that counseling so that they understand that, you know, this is a, a problem that, that happens a lot, and we need support, and it's not the end of the world, for kids. Um, it's just they've made a bad choice. Well, I got affiliated with uh, Freedom For You through my group at school. I started out as a freshman and continued through all the way throughout high school and got the opportunity today to come here and help sell raffle tickets and raise money for Freedom For You to keep our um, programs to continue. Um, my experience was definitely be beneficial throughout the four years of high school. Uh, I learned basically all of the coping skills that I'm going to need for life. I'd, I was scared at first to leave high school and be without group, but they've taught me a lot of very valuable life skills, yeah. If people want more information about Freedom For You, they can go to freedomcommunity.com and see what's happening there. 
Well, tonight was truly a magical evening at Trump National. It's always good to see people coming out to support Freedom For You and having a great time while doing it. Back to you, Maria. And Freedom For You will hold their annual Jazz Festival on Sunday, July 27th at the South Coast Botanic Gardens. For more information, you can go to their website at freedomcommunity.com. And when we come back, it's time to celebrate wellness and get out there and have some fun on the water. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox, here to remind you of the importance of sharing the road. It's important to slow down when you see orange cones in the road. Many days, men and women are involved in road work, so always slow down, even below the speed limit, and be aware of the workers in the road. By following these rules, we can all share the road safely. This message is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. It's time for the Celebrate Wellness fundraiser to help cancer survivors and their loved ones. On Sunday, June 22nd, the Cancer Support Community Redondo Beach will hold their annual food and wine tasting event at the South Coast Botanic Garden. Enjoy a beautiful summer afternoon in the garden from 3 to 7 p.m. sampling wonderful wines and cuisine. There will be musical entertainment and for sports fans, the World Cup will be shown. For more information, you can go to cancersupportredondobeach.org. Peninsula residents continue to join forces in the fight against cancer. Our community recently teamed up at the annual Relay for Life event to support cancer survivors. Liz Brown Swanson joins us from the event at Mira Lest Intermediate School. Today I'm at the Mirrorless Intermediate School. I'm on the track where they are hosting the 11th annual Relay for Life. It is put on to benefit the American Cancer Society. This is about bringing the community together with cancer survivors to help find a cure. This is such an important event for us um, as a survivor and others that have survived and others that have not. Uh, all of us have been through a tremendous amount and so I just feel anything we can do to gather money, to aid research, to, to beat this cancer. I'm incredibly fortunate that I'm a one-year pancreatic cancer survivor, the deadliest of cancers in terms of survival rate. And uh, cancer is something that uh, will touch virtually everyone's life at some point, and it touched mine last year. It's everybody's nightmare. It is the nightmare. And when you're told that your kid has cancer, they found a tumor, it was like words, do you remember the show Electric Company? So it's like words shooting past you and then, then you just buckle up and you have to go with it. Just a few years ago I I went to a life clinic and they said I'm a survivor. When I went there, I'm. they said I was a survivor because I've been like five years out of cancer then. I wanted to thank and encourage everyone who volunteered. Um, I also wanted to recognize the survivors that were out here. It was very touching, um, very, very heartfelt and, and gut-wrenching. Cancer has touched my family in very significant ways. I lost my father, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, uh, aunts, uncles, um, you know, my sister has breast cancer and it just too many friends and, and neighbors and even acquaintances to, uh, to list here. So it's and again, unfortunately, I don't think I'm alone in, uh, in, in having that experience. My fault was that I wasn't very good about having the mammograms. And I, um, because nobody in my family had breast cancer, so at that time I believed that I was immune. And then I finally got in to have my mammogram and surprise, surprise, called for another one and so on. So then I needed to um, go through the chemo and radiation planning to go to Spain and my doctor called me and says you've got to come in right away. So I canceled my trip to Spain and had breast surgery, but got back, eventually went to Spain, kept teaching school, so life is good. The theme here is finish the fight. Where will the money go? It goes through the American Cancer Society and it comes back to us in the local community to help fight cancer through research, through whatever resources are needed for our people in the community who are suffering this disease. I had two really personally good friends of mine that walked, one that's a one-year survivor of breast cancer and another one
who's my workout buddy, who's a 30 year survivor for breast cancer. So it, it helps me see the whole range of surviving for cancer. So I think it's pretty incredible. And these are actually a few of my students from uh, the biomed program there at Marymount. So we're here to support. You know, with my family personally, my grandmother is a survivor and everyone in my family always gets checked just in case. And just being a part of the medical program itself, it's, to, it's important to try to find a cure. The American Cancer Society just celebrated its 100th birthday last year, so we've been around for a while fighting the fight and really trying to eradicate cancer. And, um, you know, we've done a great job so far, and, you know, we've improved the numbers. More and more people thought of it as a death sentence, and now, well, along with research and technology, um, it's not as much anymore. You know, there's hope and, and we can fight it. With cancer, uh, you can never give up. You have to believe that you can beat the disease and you have to seek out the best treatment. You've got to be proactive in your own sense that you've got to eat right, you've got to get uh, exercise, uh, you've got to have a network of people around who, you who uh, help you and, and uh, believe in you and, and support you. And uh, if you do all those things and you're fortunate, you can beat cancer. Hearing all the stories of the survivors here today is so inspiring, giving us so much hope. And if you want to continue to support the efforts here, you can go on to RelayForLife.org slash CA. Back to you, Maria. According to the American Cancer Society, Relay for Life is a worldwide movement with over 4 million participants in 20 countries. And this year, Mira Catalina Elementary marked a special milestone as the school turned 50. Liz Brown Swanson joins us with more. Hi, Maria. I'm here at Mira Catalina Elementary School where the community is coming together to celebrate 50 years since this school first opened its doors with 600 plus students. A lot has changed, but one thing has remained the same, and that is the school's community spirit. I love how it's so much fun to be here, so many great teachers, the principal is awesome. Um, it's great because my mom works here too, and I have a lot of great friends here. It's just a great school to be at. It's so exciting. I mean, it's been such a great year. I mean, we've been open 50 years as an elementary school. While I've only been here a short time, the staff has been pretty static for years and has been together, and it's a very community feel at this school, and uh, a lot of parents are here, a lot of alumni, so it's an exciting time to be here. You guys to be the second principal of this school what was that like it was great it was a it was a wonderful experience how many years have you been teaching in the district I've been teaching for 30 some years and now I'm not teaching I'm subbing only here at Mira Catalina it's found my yearbook I think they needed to crack the safe to find this yearbook but there I am with my pixie cut and I'm very proud to be an alumnus and uh, my daughters are now here, and it's a full circle. 50th anniversary for Mira Catalina, and you went to school here. I did. I was a kindergartner that went here in 1964. What are the challenges to keep this school a distinguished school to do all the great work that happens here? Well, I tell you, it, it takes a team, and, and fortunately, we have a great team in place from you know the district office and, and the staff here. Um, you know, it really takes a coordination and, and a dedication to students, and fortunately, they have that here at Miracat. Mira Catalina, I've been at five different schools and coached at two different schools, and by far, my best memories are at Mira Catalina, and that's the best times of my life. And the community support was wonderful, the kids were fabulous, the staff was fabulous, and I can't even imagine having a better experience than I had at Mira Catalina. I joined when my oldest was in kindergarten and that was 1995 and I've been here ever since. I started working here about 14 years ago and I love it. It's a family atmosphere. We're a very creative school. We're very family oriented. Um, great sense of community. Um, I, I just very exciting school. It's a great campus. It's a very family-oriented group. Everybody kind of knows each other and takes care of each other. So, what do you think of this school? I like it a lot. Here with your brother, what do you think about this place? Your mom was here before you. Um, yeah, I like it here. It's it's kind of like a compact place, so you pretty much know everybody here. The school's been awesome. Our son has been, you know, basically had his entire education here, elementary school-wise, and it was just a great experience. 
us all about it. What was it like going to school here? Well, it's been fun. We had a lot of projects, a couple of field trips, and yeah, it's been fun. This place makes a special place of all the parents and the teachers and the staff here are just so loving and so caring about the, the kids, and it's just a great, it's a great elementary school um, for your child to go to. And another big congratulations to all the families and people here at Mary Catalina celebrating 50 years in the community. And these students at Mary Cat have one thing left to say. We love Mary Catalina! All right, back to you, Maria, in the studio. And when we come back, it's time for summer, so why not get out there and get some sun and exercise at the same time? Don't go away. Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox here to remind you of the importance of sharing the road. When it comes to riding a bicycle, it is required for those under 18 to wear a bicycle helmet and a good idea for the rest of us as well. Bicyclists should stay to the right-hand edge of the roadway if they are moving less than the speed of traffic, unless they are setting up a left turn, passing, or avoiding debris. Also, bicyclists may use the whole lane if they are going the speed of traffic. When drivers are parked on the side of the road, they should always use caution when opening car doors. By following these rules, we can all share the road safely. This message is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. It was a country carnival to support a great local charity. Ride to Fly is a therapeutic horseback riding program which supports individuals who are mentally and physically challenged. They recently had their annual event and Mark J. Dotty was there for all the fun. Thanks Maria. We're here at Ride to Fly which is a total blast. There's some great music and some great food and it's all for an excellent cause. Ride to Fly is a therapeutic horseback riding program for the mentally and physically challenged and we service all disabilities. We have a few restrictions. Uh, we have a weight limit of 175 pounds and they can't start until they're three. And, but we have no upper age limit. In fact, we've had a recovering stroke victim also in her 80s. Today's event is a con country carnival fundraiser that we do once a year and it will help feed a lot of horses and we're going to be building a new mounting ramp for our clients and it will help pay for that also. I'm here with Naomi and John and Naomi is actually one of the clients of Ride to Fly. What's a normal day when you go to Ride to Fly like? What, what do you do? Uh, I usually just like ride in the lake. Uh, arena. Great, all right. They learn to listen carefully to the teacher and she follows the instructions really well and she's more and more confident in controlling the horse. Ride to Fly today was a lot of fun. There was great food, there was great music, and there was great people like Marjan and Courageous here. And I think, Courageous, did you have a really good time? I think he had a pretty good time. All right. Back to you, Maria. And finally, if you're looking to spend more time outdoors in the ocean, then dragon boating might just be for you. The LA Harbor Dragon Boat Team is a local group comprised of members age 8 to 15 from all over the South Bay. Dragon boating is a team paddling water sport which has its roots in ancient China and dragon boat racing is now an international sport. Here's more from John Clayton. Okay, we're down here in Dragon Boat headquarters. Tell me briefly about the program and what it in entails. Our, our program is all about uh, kids learning how to dragon boat race. It's a 3,000 year old Chinese tradition. We try to do everything as a team. We go out, we paddle as a team, 
We clean the boat as a team. As a matter of fact, our motto is one boat, one beat. Come down on Sunday mornings and jump in the boat and try it out. And if you like it, you can join. Most of our paddlers are first year, first time paddlers. What sort of things that you learn? I mean, when you first came here, were you a bit nervous? Definitely. And when you actually got into the water, I mean, did you have any idea what to expect? Uh, not really. I kind of thought it was somewhat like kayaking, so I kind of knew, like, t kind of what to do with that. And what, what happened when you got in the boat? How did you feel? I was nervous, but, like, our coaches were really kind and they, like, helped us through it, so they knew what to do. I'm proud of them. I think I'm, I, they come to practice, they have to get up early when they don't want to. This is a weekend for them. They're busy in high school as well, so this is something that, you know, they have, I'm proud of them for doing. Well, I'm pretty proud of the, uh, the youth team we have here. They, uh, they're, they're kids of all ages from up to 15 years old, and, and they won a medal last year at the Long Beach Dragon Boat Festival. The children, and these are sometimes younger than junior high kids, they competed against high school kids and actually ended up winning a medal. I'm real proud of them. Go. It's a, a form of exercise and it's a form of mental preparedness for anything in life. Let her eye. Go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That sure looks like a lot of fun. And that will do it for this episode of Peninsula Beat. Thanks for watching and make it a great day.